Welcome. My name is Ria, and I'm here to guide you through a cross yoga flow class. And I'm holding a block because if you have one, you might want to bring one along. If you're new to yoga, I would suggest you go to that playlist called Cross Yoga Slow and try those videos out because the pace is a little bit slower there. If you're ready, you can take a seat and let's breathe. Take that comfortable seat that you prefer and then close your eyes. If you're ready to sit still, you can definitely do that, but maybe you want to begin with just moving your neck a little bit. Focusing in on your body and what it feels when you move your neck or your head. Any tightness or pain to some degree. And then place the head on the top of the spine and then move to your shoulders doing whatever movement you want to in your shoulders again sensing in what's going on right there and then pluck the shoulders in and move your spine don't do big movements just more like explorative movements. And then letting your spine stay tall and strong. And then focus on your sitting bones in the mat, your foundation, both left and right buttocks, plant it well there. And we are going to focus on foundation today and house building. And I'll read a short scripture in a while uh, on, from Matthew 7, 24 through 26. We have a story Jesus is telling. But first, calm your breath when you sit still. And if you want to breathe more in quietness, you might want to pause the video or the playing of the video for a moment. If you're ready to listen, picture Jesus speaking to a crowd of people on the top of a mountain. And then he's sharing this story. Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the streams rose, the wind blew and beat against the house and it fell with a great crash. If there was a word or a picture in this short story that speaks to you, um, keep that lingering in your mind. If you're ready to move, I'm going to do 
rotations or twists. So you can take your left hand and put it on your right thigh and twist with the spine still tall towards the top. And we're going to do this with the hands. As we move aside, you're going to turn your palms up like you're carrying something here, twisting to the other side. Get your hands down and twist. Incorporating our breath. Inhale. Maybe Ujjayi breath, that snoring, exhaling sound through your nose. Inhale. And exhale. If you want more, you can take the hands up to shoulder height just to create more strength in the shoulders. If you want even more, try to create this twist with your hands elevated and try to reach the same twist from left to right as you did when you had your hands down. One more time to each side. A few moments of free movements. Maybe you want to stretch your legs or move your hands. So Jesus is talking about building houses on a foundation. But first of all, I want to focus on the house. It is what we see, right? This is when we look at things, we look at each other, we see this house, if you picture your life as this house. And as I was reading and meditating on this scripture, because I do that before I, I take them here to the class, I was, you can make your way into down talk, I was thinking about what I was building move in your down dog. What kind of house am I building? What am I busy doing? Am I busy building a beautiful house? Because I want it to look good. I want it to be impressive. I want to show off what I can do. What kind of house am I busy building? What are you busy building? Move into plank, warming up, taking your knees down, drag your hands to watch your knee come up on your knees, bring your arms out to the side for this, this big circle, cactus your arms with a slight back bend, reach the arms up overhead, palms together, and like an arrow, shoot forward, trying to keep the core tight, leaning forward. And when you feel like you can't hold it anymore, let the palms fit down on the floor. Tuck the toes under, downward facing dog. Doing that a couple more times, plank. Knees down. Drag the hands back on the mat. Coming up on your knees, circle your arms. Cactus arms back bending, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Palms together, straight spine. Move your hip back for this to, to be, be done. <laughs> and maybe your hands fall down like the house, crashing down on the floor eventually. Downward facing dog. Just the last time. Plank. Knees down, drag your hands. Bring the arms out. Cactus arms. Straight spine, palms together, hip back. Taking a little bit of time, resisting gravity. And hands down. From down dog, bring the right leg up. Open up the hip with the knee bended. So doing this motion. And then you're going to kind of do a dynamic movement. Bring this bended knee underneath your belly in your plank. And then kind of draw it to the side, to your left side like this. 
pull it back and then up again three-legged dog open hip let's follow our breath pluck the shoulders in inhale and as you exhale quicker than before pull this knee down and up like you're sewing your knee underneath repeat if it's too much for some reason don't do it just hold the plank maybe with your knee down two more and plank come down on your knees again toenails on the floor we're gonna rest the <laughs> wrists a little bit bring your arms up and then bend your elbows a little bit i think i'm gonna stand like this or like this maybe <laughs> and bring the elbows behind the shoulder and then pull them like the elbows can reach each other on the back hopefully they can't and as you pull the elbows back towards each other, you drag the elbows down as well. Like this. <sighs> Keep the spine straight. Let's do that two more times. A little bit quicker. Arms up. Cactus arms. Bring the elbows behind the shoulders. Pull in without lifting the elbow or the shoulders towards the ears. Slowly descend down. <sighs> Last time, where you focus on keeping the core and the spine straight. You might hit some bumps on the road back there. If you've got nuts and things here in your, in your shoulder girdle, you might feel like duk, 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 <laughs> kind of walking things down. Anyway, down with facing dog one more time. And then opposite side, left knee up, bend it. We did the first one slow, so we're going to do that one here slow as well. So bring the knee in, plank, shoot it out towards your left side, or your right side, sorry. Coming in and up, and keep the knee bended. Following with the breath a little bit quicker. Inhale, exhale. A lot of core and shoulder strength. We're building a strong foundation here. Two more. And then bring left knee up and step the left foot to the top of the mat. Bring your block if you have, if you don't have, you can actually use a book or something like a shoe or the like for this one. The most uh, short end you put in between your palms, push in with the palms on the block. High lunge. Then take your elbows underneath the block, squeeze it in, lift the arms up overhead, bend the elbows, keep squeezing the block. Hands behind your head. Reach it up again, pull it down. As you pull down into what I call prayer pose, your elbows can be reached out so that the bottom of the arm is aligned with the floor. Keep pushing. Twisting, leaning slightly forward, left leg is at the front, you twist to your left side. Stay for a breath or two. Coming back to center, putting the block down, especially if it's a hard cork block in front of your left foot, and use it for support on the second height for your half moon. All of right side up. Gaze on the floor though. Maybe. <laughs> Release. Bring your hands down close to the hip and step back to down dog. Take a breath, straight spine, micro bend your knees. Right leg, lift it up to bring the foot to the top of the mat. Again, block in between your hands. Prayer pose with the block. Pull the pelvis in and go as low as you feel like today. 
All right. Lift the block you're pushing in up on top of your head. Elbows coming in to what I would say shoulder distance. Keep pulling in on the block as you bend the elbows behind your head for a tricep. Lift your arms up overhead. Keep pushing in. Your arms might be shaking or quivering a little bit. And bring your hands down in prayer pose. Lean forward with a twist to your right side. I'm hovering my arm. Keep pushing the block without lifting the shoulders. Coming back to center, bring the block down in front of your right foot. Half moon, turning your left foot to the left side. All of left arm up. Breathe. Scanning, coming to a stance on the top of the mat, bring your hands down close to the hip. Just leave the block. Mountain pose. Or should we say rock pose? <laughs> to stay with the theme. Close your eyes. <sighs> Maybe catch your breath. Coming back to the story again. If you paid attention to the things that is happening to the house, there's two things. There's rain and there's this windy storm coming. And as I was meditating on this, I was thinking about the rain. The rain coming drop by drop and eroding the ground. And maybe if I built on this sand, I don't see the effects of the rain or the eroding of the ground until it's too late. And I was wondering, is there drips of pride or unforgiveness or something else in my life that I need to surrender because it's drip by drip by drip that's eroding my foundation and my faith and my calling? Is there any addictions, so to say, that I need to surrender to stay strong? You can open your eyes again, as always, if there's something that's kind of pinching your heart, like just, oh, you can pause and linger on that a little bit longer. Bring your block again, as before, on the slimmest length there with the palms in to watch each other. Sit down in your chair, leaning forward. Bring your elbows aligned with the floor or your underarm, and then again, lift the arms up overhead. Keep the arms extended up overhead. Then from chair pose, rise up, keep pushing in, maybe a little bit of a micro bend, just stay still and just moving here for the purpose of seeing. Move to the left, or to your right, sorry, and then to your left. Keep pushing it in. And as we did before, Bend the elbows behind your head. Reach it up overhead. Coming down into your chair pose again. A little bit quicker. Reach up, push in. Go to the side, either side, maybe right to begin with. And left. Pull the elbows in as you bring the block behind your head. Strengthen your tricep and your shoulders, and then sit down as you bring your hands into prayer pose. Take a breath here. Last one. Reach up, 
maybe inhale. Exhale, core in, go for the side bend, exhale. Inhale, bring up. Exhale down. Standing tall, inhale. Push on the block, bend the elbows, exhale. Extend the arms up overhead. And go all the way forward in your forward fold. And you can just leave the block on the side. Going more into the legs. Lift the right leg up and back. And you can definitely stay with the fingers on the floor. The hip is closed. Toes are pointing down. If you want to try to balance, let go of the arms. Bring them out to the side. And then if you can somewhat balance here, try to move your arms. So bring your arms behind you, still with the same alignment of the spine there, maybe to the front. Breathe. Keep moving your arms. <laughs> and then slowly bring your hands down, lowering down the right foot at the back of the mat, warrior two. Tracking front knee over ankle and going deep. Breathe. Grasp the hands behind you if possible or find the arm, whatever works. Shoulder girdle back, straight spine though. And then lean forward like you're doing a side ankle. Keep the arms there behind you, lift up, let the knees and the legs stay. Lean back. Forward. And back. Let go of the hands, windmill the arms around, vinyasa. Flank on toes and knees, lower down. Stay hovering. Move into an up dog if possible. Knees on the ground, shoulders back. Tuck the toes down dog. Put your right leg to the front of the mat and lift into the balance posture. Warrior three variation here. Stay with your hands on the ground if you prefer or bring them out to the side. And if you really like being playful here, instead of moving the arms like in the same direction, you might bring one arm to the front and one to the back and see how that's going with moving and switching side. <laughs> Have some fun. <laughs> Bring your hands down, lower the foot, warrior two. Letting the feet sink firmly down in the mat. Hands behind you and really make sure this core stays because typically when we take the hands behind us, you stay put. We do like this with the spine. So we want to stay tall, even though we bring the arms behind us. Lean forward, strong core. Lifting up, going for the peaceful side bending thing. The arms just follow track of the leg that's behind you. Last. And let go one more time, vinyasa. Plank, low plank, cobra up dog, and then child's pose. The second thing that is challenging the house is that wind and it's a storm and typically storms, they are not slow. <laughs> they all come up all of a sudden. And in my mind, it became these 
sudden events that might happen in our lives. And it's not when things are going well that we really figure out who we are, what qualities we have, if our values are strong, but it's when we encounter storms, when things break, when things doesn't work out the way that we hoped, that's when we see what we have built on. Bring yourself onto your knees. And you can either put the block underneath the mat if you don't want your foot on it or just on the side here. This is an option if you're somewhat flexible in your hips. So I'm going to put the sole of the foot, the right foot on the block and the left knee on my folded mat in this case. So a lizard pose using the block. Don't lean in over to the side of the block. I am still like I would be in licit pose, hip width distance between the knees or the feet. I cannot come further down than this, but this is also good. <laughs> So when life storms come, it really doesn't matter if we have built an amazing, beautiful house, because if it drops, you can't see it anymore. So what, what do we build on? Do we build on things and values, faith that is worth building on? That's Jesus' question, at least to me. Move back. And go for the opposite side. And if the block underneath the foot really doesn't work, it's just a, being a little bit more creative with it. You can uh, just not use it, or you can use it underneath your hands instead. Let the hip sink down. Two more slow, deep breaths. And then you can release. Take a seat. It can be on the block if you like. Kind of stretch in the shoulder because we have used that a lot. Bring the right arm behind you. If you happen to have a strap and you know you're going to need it, bring it along. Take the left arm behind you. See if the fingers can reach. And relax your shoulders. The story um, can both be a story that challenges my faith and you and me as well. But I just also want to share some encouragement because 
if the house is built on this rock, it can stand, it can resist the storms of life. And then I think it is encouragement as well. Storms happen, rain happens. We might feel that our house is pulled to left and right. We might have leaks in the roof. <laughs> we might, you know, experience all these things. But because the foundation is strong, the house stays. The healthy built house. So let's bring that encouragement into our minds and our hearts. Release. And again, if you don't have a block, you might want to roll up a blanket or you can even roll up a blanket and put it on top of your block. We're going to put it under the sacrum or the bottom part of the lumbar spine. I use the second height for now just to show you, bring your arms out and resting pose. So this will be our last one. So you can stay here uh, one minute or for the length of the resting. If you feel like it's super great to extend the legs like this, do that. If I'm gonna work my spine, I have to say that I really like it on the highest height, but then with my knees bend it. Then I get more into the lumbar spine instead of the what I feel is more not, not helpful. So this works great for me. So choose. And then we're going to rest here. I'm going to come down in 30 seconds or so for resting. For now, just try to relax. And then resting pose. So take the block out, bring your hip down on the floor. If you don't want to stay there, I would recommend you don't stay there, especially if it's on the highest height. Hug your knees in and then bring your arms out. You can also put the block behind the shoulder blades for a little bit of a chest opener, but maybe you just want to rest. And maybe Pray or meditate on this encouragement that the foundation is there. And if you built your life on this foundation, it will stick, it will last, no matter what is thrown at the house. So take courage, my friend, if you feel like you're in the middle of life storm God's healing power and strength and endurance is everlasting
If you're ready to slowly come out of your rest, move your fingers, your toes. You can bring your feet in on the mat, bend your knees and windshield wiper your legs from left to right. And then you might want to roll onto the side. And from there, take a seat. Mm. Maybe again, picture the foundation as your mat. You might want to touch it. It stays there. <laughs> From my heart to yours, thank you so much for doing this practice with me. And share this video with a friend if you liked it, and make sure to like and subscribe. If you happen to be interested in building more strength in your body, the video that I have will release Saturday is for you if you're used to doing yoga, but you want to try to incorporate more strength with weights, so you can try that out if you like. See you.